Hi everyone, welcome back. Today we are going to conclude our work on DNA Toolkit. Hopefully this is going to be a very short video. As you remember, we finished BioC class in our last video, where we transferred all the functionality from DNA Toolkit into a BioC class. And we're going to add three more helper functions to read text files, to write text files, and read FASTA format files. We are going to be reusing this code, of course, in the future, and if we need an extra functionality in our DNA Toolkit, we're going to go back and modify it or add any extra functionality we might need. Okay, so let's go back to the code. Here is where we left off last time. Let's just run it one more time just to make sure that our class is still intact and still working. No changes since the last video. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go back to our structures. We only had a DNA nucleotides and DNA codons. So as we are going to be adding RNA support, we're going to need an RNA codon table and an RNA nucleotides. And instead of having just a list of DNA nucleotides and another list for RNA nucleotides, we're going to have this dictionary. Okay, I will show you why we need that in a minute. And the other thing we're going to do, we're going to use an RNA codon table. It's almost the same as DNA codon table, as you might know. It's just one nucleotide difference. Instead of thiamine, we have uracils here, right? So just for the kind of structure's sake, we're going to keep these uh, nice dictionaries here. And let's go back to our code. We're not going to add any more structures to this. We can go back and start modifying some of these functions, not all of them, but some of them, to support the RNA as well. So the first thing we're going to need to change is this DNA nucleotides. We don't have that anymore. We have nucleotide base. Okay, so the first part we're going to change is this here. Instead of DNA nucleotides, we can validate a DNA or RNA string. How about we do this? Nucleotide base, and we're giving it self.type. As you remember, type will hold a type of the sequence, so we can create a DNA or RNA. Okay, so this is an easy and quick fix, and now validate function can accept DNA and RNA to validate. So the next thing we want to change is generate random sequence because we want to be able to generate DNA or an RNA string, right? So it's going to be exactly the same change. We're going to say nucleotide base and we're going to tell it, oh, can you um, just look up the type I am? So my sequence type and then generate from that. So the next function we want to modify is our transcription function. We don't want to transcribe RNA to RNA, right? Uh, instead, we're going to do a check. If it is a DNA, then we're going to transcribe it to RNA. If it is an RNA, we're just going to say it's not a valid DNA string. Just like that. It's a quick check. If it is a DNA, then do a replace T with U and return the transcription. Okay? If it's not, we're just going to see a message, not a DNA sequence. So we need to do a very similar thing to our reverse complement function here. Instead of just creating this mapping blindly again for DNA, we need to do a check. If it's a DNA, then we're going to map a DNA. If it's RNA, let's map an RNA. So this one line, we just need to replace with a check. If it's DNA, then do the regular mapping. If it's a, an RNA, do the RNA mapping. But this line of code, 56, is going to stay the same. Okay? So the next function we're going to look at is translate sequence, because it is basing its amino acid sequence on DNA codons table. We need to be able to do a check. Just to see if it's a DNA, then use a DNA codon table. If it's an RNA, use an RNA codon table, okay? And as you can see, we're just introducing checks here, um, just to make sure that it's a correct sequence. Here it's complaining about RNA codon table because we did not include it right here. So let's do that. RNA codon table. Now we have all three structures, DNA, RNA, and nucleotide base. And we can see that the error is gone. The next function, codon usage, we are doing exactly the same thing. We're going to replace that line here with the same piece of code, but we're going to introduce that check. And as you can imagine, if we are doing check for DNA, we need to do a check for RNA to be able to use the RNA codons table. Okay, so here it is. Uh, that's a quick check on the codon usage function. We're not going to modify any more functions because they are kind of independent of the sequence in our case. So reading frames can be generated from DNA or RNA, it doesn't really matter, because all these functions we're calling down here, reverse complement, translate sequence, uh, proteins from reading frames, they are already using modified functions like codon usage, 
translate sequence, right? So we're doing all the checks here and the rest of the functions are not doing that check. Now we finished modifying all of our functions and the best way to test them is to go back to main.py file and we can test the whole set of functions by just changing from DNA to RNA. We're gonna say, can you generate 40 character long RNA sequence? And now we're gonna run it and we're gonna see if we made any mistakes in our code. And we actually did. So provided data does not seem to be a correct RNA sequence and it's failing the initialization part. Let's go back and let's see if we can fix that. So initialization function is this. Should remove this space here. Okay, that's correct. It's validating itself. So the problem is in our generate random sequence. Yes, it's right here because we're telling it to use self and we should use type because we're passing the type right here. So we're passing a new type into it and we're saying, can you regenerate the new sequence with this new type instead of using this type here because it will be set to DNA and we are using DNA again to generate, but then we're validating it with RNA and it fails, okay? So this should work. Let's try running now. Okay, so randomly generated sequence, we can see that it is an RNA sequence indeed. It's an RNA. We have a U instead of thymine, not a DNA sequence. That's when it calls the transcription function. Okay, and then we have these amino acids because the tables contain exactly the same amino acids, okay? It's just the codons that are different. So the last thing we're gonna do is we're gonna go back to our utilities.py file. And we're going to add three utility functions, three helper functions. If you've been learning Python by now, you probably know how to read and write files. So this function is going to read the text file, text file specifically, because there might be different formats like CSV, table files, faster files, and we should name the functions appropriately. So this just reads a text file, okay? The only thing we do here is we just open a file and read it line by line. And we're going to strip all the new line characters. So the next function we're gonna add is the opposite. We're gonna write. So our write text file function is going to accept the path to the file, the sequence, it might be a list or anything like that, and the mode. So it will start from write mode so it's going to write into the file. So if we're gonna call this function many times, it's just going to overwrite the file. So we are giving um, a user ability to pass any parameter, any mode, so they can pass A instead, and that means append. So we can write once and then append all our output. It will be added to the file instead of overwriting the file. We're gonna see that in a quick example, okay? And the last function is we're gonna reuse the function we wrote for our one of our Rosalind challenges, which was a FASTA file reading. So here's a good example of code reuse. We already written this function in one of our videos. I'm going to link to that right now if you have not seen it, okay? So let's do a quick test. Let's try reading, writing, and reading a FASTA file. So let's try writing some of this output to the file, okay? So for that, of course, we're gonna need to go from our utilities Okay, import read FASTA. Okay, let's do that too. Then read txt file and write text file. Okay, so let's try writing into a file. So we're gonna do write to a file. Um, the files, we're gonna just call it test.txt. So the next parameter is sequence and we're gonna write our test sequence into it. Okay sequence and the mode is going to be right so let's not change that mode okay let's try running this and we can see that there's a new file in our folder called text txt and we can see that our sequence has been written into it so that's the sequence we generated it's in the file so let's try running this again let's go back to main we can actually try having this side by side and just closing this part here so let's try running this again we can see it's changed because it was overwritten. So now that we've seen that we can write into a file and it saves our data correctly, let's try adding some more information. Let's say we want to save a sequence we're working on and the generated reading frames from that sequence. So let's copy this code here. Okay, let's put it in here. And instead of printing reading frames, we're gonna save them into a file. Let's copy this line here and move it here instead of printing. Okay, 
And of course, we're gonna save our refs, reading frames, into a file. Our refs, because a reading frame is a list, we need to cast it into a string. So let's try running this now. So now we can see that it only saved the last reading frame. Okay, that goes back to us not using the mode. So we can write the original sequence here, and then we can do this. We can come here and add a mode append. Okay, so if we look at this, it says mode write. If we're going to use mode append, which should be a string, by the way, a character, we are going to see that it's going to write this sequence here, and then it's going to append to a file instead of overwriting it. Let's try running this now. And that's the desired result. We can see our sequence here, and we see all of the reading frames. Okay, so you can go back to utilities file and modify these reading uh, writing functions as you see fit. So this is going to be very kind of project specific. So if you want to be able to write in a very custom format, so you want to write in a table kind of CSV files, or you want to write a JSON file from a dictionary, you have the base kind of reading and writing functions there. You can write some code on top of that to parse the data, to prepare the data before you write it into a file. So it is up to you, but the base functions are there for you to use. Okay, and so let's try reading a FASTA file. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to bring in a FASTA formatted file from Rosalind. Okay, I have this file saved in my folder. I'm just going to drop it in here. Okay, so it's FASTA examples, and this is from Rosalind challenges we did before. So it has three FASTA entries here. So let's try running them. So let's close the file and close the FASTA samples, and let's try calling our read FASTA format. So let's say just call it FASTA for a quick test, and we're going to call our reading FASTA file format, and we're going to give that a link to that file. So what we can do, just to make sure it picks it up, we can right-click under that file, and there is an option to copy relative path. So the FASTA function only accepts the path to a file, so let's just do that because the FASTA file is in the same directory as the PI file. So let's try running this. Okay, and of course we didn't print anything out. Let's do this print FASTA and let's see what it returns. Okay, so okay, here we go. It returns a dictionary. So there is a key and there is a value. So now you can use this dictionary for processing. You load in a data and then you choose which key you want to use and then work on the value in that key. Okay, so now I'm going to remove this code. It was just for the test. Let's go back to all of our files. So here's our BioSeq class completed, kind of the first version of it, and today is going to be the final commit. Okay, so the next file is BioStructs. We have our nucleotide base in it. We have a codon base for RNA and DNA. I'm going to include this fast sample file just for tests. Um, our main file, again, was used just for tests as well. So you can, let's say, clone this and make sure it runs. So that's our text file. We're not going to include that into our final commit. We're not going to need that. And of course, our utilities.py file that has colored the coloring function, reading, writing for FASTA and the text files. This is the first version of our DNA toolkit. Next, we're going to look in two directions. One is going to be genome toolkit, which is going to include our DNA toolkit. And we are going to be wrapping that into graphical user interface. Okay, so we will be developing two things in parallel. We're going to be working on a genome toolkit, and we're going to be working on an application that uses both DNA toolkit and genome toolkit. Okay, so this is it for this video. Thanks a lot for watching and listening. If you liked the video, please don't forget to thumbs up and share the video. If you have any questions, leave them in the comment section below or join our Matrix or Telegram communities. Until next time, Rebel Coder, signing out.